What's going on, dude? Two, it's your boy, Cam, ATL. Shout out to the BFF squad. Shout out to everybody watching this video right now. Drop a like down below because I already know you're going to love it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment anything in the comment section to enter your name into the $50 giveaway. Thank you guys for joining me. We, uh, we are here to talk about week nine. I'm not going to take too much time away from y'all. I'm just going to go ahead and get straight to the point. Um, so I'm going to give you guys my first look lineup at the end of, well, as we're put going through each position, I'll go ahead and plug in each guy for the first look lineup. Go to greenlightdfs.com to join the squad officially for NFL. We took our first loss in about six or seven weeks last week. Um, I ended up last minute getting off of Gurley, which was a mistake. Uh, so just overthinking ended up taking the first loss in like seven weeks, but that's okay. Cause it's a big bounce back type of week here. So I love this slate. Let's go ahead and get into it. At quarterback, Mahomes against Cleveland. Obviously, he's been a very consistent quarterback. He's a good option against Cleveland uh, at 7-1. I don't know how much of a battle it ends up being for Mahomes. I think they win pretty easily here. So I'm not going to pay the 6-1. The next guy up is going to be my quarterback in the first look, Cam Newton. I love Cam here in this matchup at 6-6 going against Tampa Bay. A team that gave up 46 to Mitch Trubisky in week four and haven't given under 20 DraftKings points all season. Okay, Cam Newton's in an amazing spot. He could do it with his legs, do it with his arm. They have a 30 uh, point total, implied total from uh, Vegas. They are in a, it's a great spot right here. And I love that Tampa Bay brought Fit, Fitz Magic back to being their quarterback because I think Fitz can make more plays. Um, I'm not much, much of a Winston fan anyways. I think Fitzpatrick is the better overall quarterback that's going to throw and score a whole bunch uh, over Winston. Winston makes too many mistakes. So I think this is going to be a good matchup here. And I think Cam Newton is an amazing play at 6'6". Six, six. Like I said, he is going to be the first look, but let's go ahead and just finish touching on the rest of these guys. Deshaun Watson against Denver. I'm not too interested in that. Kirk Cousins against Detroit could be a little uh, sneaker, but Detroit just traded off Golden Tate to the Eagles, so I don't know how Detroit's going to take that. That does give a bump to Galladay. That gives uh, a bump to Marvin Jones. I think Galladay benefits a little more in this matchup, um, seeing that Minnesota's got a good secondary. Um, but Kirk Cousins is a decent option, but still Drew Brees at home against the Rams. Now, this is a good spot for Drew Brees at 6-1, okay? It, I, I took a second to try to make up my mind here in this situation, okay? The one thing we know with the Rams is their offense is going to score, and against New Orleans, they're going to score, okay? Um, and one thing we know is Drew Brees is v legit at home in his dome. I like Drew Brees a lot at 6-1 playing catch-up trying to keep up with this crazy Los Angeles Rams uh, offense that has just been firing on all cylinders this year. Goff has been playing amazing. We all know what Gurley is doing. Um, they're getting Cooper Cup back. So it's just, it's a great situation for Drew Brees, man. He's going to have to air it out, and I like him at 6'1". Um, Russell Wilson, not too interested. Mitch Trubisky is not going to have to do much against Buffalo. No, thank you. Matt Ryan against Washington. I prefer Matt when he's at home. Baker Mayfield at 5'6", he's going to have to chuck it a million times. Um, question is, can he complete enough to make it worth it? Uh, he just hasn't been that great. Let's see if this new coach that's coming in for Hugh will actually sort things out and get him going. Um, anybody else I'm interested in? Ryan Fitzpatrick's a little cheap at 5'5 for what he's capable of. Okay, We saw in the beginning of the year the type of numbers he could put up. He was, one of, he was the top quarterback the first few weeks. So I absolutely love that. Jameis Winston is not going to be starting. It'll be Ryan Fitzpatrick. Joe Flacco against Pittsburgh is a decent option at 5-3. That is a rival game. So I like that game in general. Um, Alex Smith at 5,000. Now, he hasn't had a whole bunch of... I mean, he's the type of guy... He's going to get you 18 to 20. He doesn't have much upside even against Atlanta, even though Atlanta has been giving it up to quarterbacks. Alex Smith doesn't have crazy upside, but he does have safety here in this matchup against Atlanta. He's going to get you 15 to 20. That's something you know. So you're not going to get a bust out of him. So I like that. I'm not really interested in many uh, in anybody else, guys. I'm going to go ahead and plug Cam Newton, that quarterback against Tampa Bay. I absolutely love that situation for my boy Cam. All right. 
At running back, man, it, look, if you, can have, if you can find the money, Todd Gurley's a start every week, okay? Super, super consistent. He's the same type of situation as if you have the money play Adam Thielen. Both of these guys you know are going to get you 20-plus DraftKings points and are going to be very, very solid and give you that safety net that you look for. Um, I love Ty Gurley, but there's some good values here. Now, I battled with Christian McCaffrey a lot here at 7-8. As you guys know, I love the Carolina offense. I love Cam Newton this week. So Christian McCaffrey, of course, I love him. But the more I thought about it, I have to say, look, man, Kareem Hunt in a game where KC should be up big, He's going to get a ton of run. And at 7-7, I think Kareem Hunt is an amazing play here against Cleveland. Um, a, a Cleveland defense that just gave up 41 to James Conner. Okay? They gave up 38 to Melvin Gordon and 21 to Marshawn Lynch. Kareem Hunt should be in for a big game. And at 7-7, I just feel a little bit safer seeing that McCaffrey's been a little bit more up and down than he was in the beginning of the year. Now, he's going to have a good game. I'm not going to doubt that at all. He's going to have a good game. But Kareem Hunt just has a very nice floor for me here against Cleveland at 7-7, okay? Next running back that I'm really looking at, uh, Le'Veon Bell still hasn't signed with Pittsburgh, so there's no way he's going to be traded or nothing. I don't think this dude's going to play this year. If I'm going to keep it real with you, I haven't heard anything yet. I don't think he's going to play this year. Um, with the way that Connor has been running, I don't think that Le'Veon is even going to play at all. There's no reason for him to. Why even come back to play just to get hurt when they're really not, you know, they don't need him. James Conner is going to be fine. So Le'Veon Bell, I don't think he comes back. Um, so James Conner is going to be fine. It's a tough matchup for him this week, though. Tyreek Cohen, no thank you. Not interested, especially when I got my boy Latavius Murray. Now, obviously, keep an uh, eye out on Dalvin Cook. I'm not sure how Cook is looking uh, with potential to playing this week, but I know he's going through a lot. Um. He's just been dealing with a lingering hamstring issue for Dalvin Cook. Um, he's only played in three years, I mean, three games this year. I honestly think that he doesn't play again, and Latavius Murray will be an amazing play against this horrible Detroit defense um, against the run, okay? They give it up. They just gave up 23 to Chris Carson in week eight, and before that gave up 18 to uh, Kenyon Drake, Okay. So I love Latavius Murray in this matchup at 5-1. Absolutely fire that boy up. And I'll get to another running back that I love when I get to the flex because I got him ready. All right. Wide receiver, like I said, Adam Thielen. If you have the money, he's one of the most consistent wide receivers in the game. First guy I'm going to go to is Jarvis Landry against KC. I already explained to you guys. I think KC is going to be up big in this one. I love having the Hunt Landry run back. Um, because I expect KC to be up using a lot of Kareem Hunt, which also will get them up higher because I expect Kareem to get a few touchdowns. So I'm um, using Hunt getting up and then using Landry, Cleveland using Landry a ton on trying to get up with them. Um, obviously, Cleveland's not going to win this game regardless if they're at home or not. Um, they've got too much going on over there, but Jarvis Landry will be a part. Will be getting a ton of targets against Kansas City, a team that says struggle versus receivers all year, mainly because guys are just chucking it around on KC because KC's always up. But Jarvis Landry's a bet, a great option at six five. At wide receiver, I'm gonna pair my boy Devin Funches with my boy Cam Newton in this matchup against Tampa Bay. Like I said, Cam's gonna be throwing this ball. I love Devin Funches in this matchup. Um, he's been a little bit iffy. I mean, week five, he only got nine against New York. Um, last week against Baltimore's very solid secondary, by the way. He did only get five, and DJ Moore ended up going crazy. But I think this is the week Devin Funches gets in the end zone here and gets about an 18 to 20 point day. I mean, this is a defense that gave up 25 to Landry, gave up 27 to Julio. Obviously, Devin isn't Julio, but I think he can get you about 18 to 20 here at 5 6 with Cam Newton chucking him the ball in this game and with Fitzpatrick being able to score against Carolina. All right, next up, last but not least, one of Fitzpatrick's favorite targets as we saw at the beginning of the year. People might sleep on this guy. Deshaun Jackson was a huge threat the first few weeks of the year when Fitzpatrick was quarterback, 34 and 25 the first two weeks. Do not sleep on this. Their chemistry is very nice for those two. Deshaun will beat this Carolina defense deep. He will get behind this defense. And at 5,000, I love Deshaun Jackson running back my love for that Carolina offense. All right? Also, and I, I oh, hold on. And I want to talk about a few other guys real quick. Deshaun Jackson. But 
I want to talk about Cortland Sutton. I want you guys to definitely be aware of this. I don't have him in the uh, first look lineup, but I, he's my favorite value play of the week. Okay, I don't have him in the first look just because I had money left over and I ended up going up to the guy that I'm going to mention in a minute at Flex. But Cortland Sutton at 3-9 is an amazing option because Demarius Thomas has been traded to Houston. Okay, so Cortland Sutton's going to get more looks and he's a guy who is already performing fairly well, getting targets in the end zone. I love him. Obviously, Emmanuel Sanders' targets are going to skyrocket, and Sutton is, but Sutton at 3-9 is amazing value this week. So I absolutely love Sutton. I don't want you guys to think, because I don't have him in the first look, that I'm not going to find a way to get him in this week, because Sutton is an amazing play. So keep that in mind. Um, now, let me go ahead and put Jackson back in. I wanted to mention that. And remember what I said about Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones. Both of them are going to get big upticks in this past game with Golden Tate gone. Golden Tate was his favorite receiver, Matthew Stafford's favorite receiver. So all of those targets are going to be spread around. I, I like Galladay more against Minnesota. All right. All right. At tight end, Greg Olson. Greg Olson's coming back. Uh, he's actually been solid since he's came back. 8-8-15. Eight, eight, he has about a 10-point floor here against Tampa Bay in a game that they should be throwing a lot. Gave up 15 into Joku, 22 to Hooper, 16 to Barton, uh, Burton. I love Greg Olsen in this matchup at 4-7. Pair him up with Funches and Cam, like I said. And I have some run back of Deshaun Jackson on the other side for Tampa Bay. I love that situation. I love this lineup build so far. At Flex, this is the guy I ended up going up from Sutton with for because I just love him Jordan Howard in this matchup against a Buffalo team struggling by the way Buffalo is freezing cold too it's probably going to be freezing which upgrades the run game um, I like this a lot here at 4-7 for Jordan Howard okay first of all Derek Anderson left the end of the game against New England um, Monday night due to an elbow injury now we don't know exactly because this is Tuesday Okay, we don't know exactly what's going on, but we know that he's banged up. Okay, they could possibly be coming into this game against the Bears with a third stringer, and I'm not even sure who that's going to be. Okay, um, even no matter who they have in, Chicago Bears are an amazing defense. This is going to be very hard, very hard for the Bills to be able to score. I love Jordan Howard. I love pairing uh, running backs with my defense, and that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm pairing the Bears up with Jordan Howard. I'm expecting the Bears to shut Buffalo down and use a lot of Jordan Howard. I absolutely love it, man. James White had an amazing game yesterday. James White is amazing, by the way. I have him in my fantasy league. I absolutely love that dude. But Jordan Howard's in a great spot, man, at 4-7. That's just a little too cheap for that matchup against Buffalo. And that's it, guys. There's the first look. Cam Newton, Kareem Hunt, Latavius Murray, Jarvis Landry, Devin Funches, Deshaun Jackson, Greg Olson, Jordan Howard, and Bears D. I would say this lineup is more cash-based. Um, it's not very GPP. These guys are very safe plays. Um, it does have some upside, like with guys like Deshaun Jackson, but I would stick to cash games. And, but, and also, I, I, I do think that throughout the week, take looks and find ways to get Cortland Sutton in there, because I think Cortland Sutton's going to be a major factor now with Demarius Thomas out, and especially at that price at 3-9. Like I said, the only reason he's not in this first look is because I had the money just left over, and Jordan Howard was just staring me in the face. And like I said, this matchup, with the Bears shutting Buffalo down, the run game's going to be used heavily, and I like pairing that running back up with the defense, and that's all that is to it. All right, but that's it, guys. Good luck, everybody. I hope you kill it. Uh, it's a bounce-back week for GreenLightDFS.com, and in a big way, let's go ahead and get it. Let's go over 200 this week, man. I've been striving for that uh, since, what, we scored it a few weeks ago or something, three weeks ago or something like that, but I've been looking for that. All right, so I've been looking for that. So I'm going after it, man. Good luck, everybody. I hope you kill it. Comment anything in the comment section. Remember to enter your name into the $50 giveaway. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter at Kim underscore ATL. Thank you guys for watching, and I'm out.